All right, everyone, four weeks until the election, until Election Day. We are finally, after months, after years, honestly, of talking about this campaign, we are in the true home stretch right now. We, we are at that final point. And on Election Day, four weeks from right now, when people are going to be going to the polls all across the nation and casting the last ballots after Election Day, it's over. Even though Donald Trump wants to get votes from Georgia after Election Day, sorry, Donnie, the election ends on Election Day. And why not, with four weeks left to go, go ahead, fill out an electoral college map because we are starting to get some early votes. We are starting to see some numbers. And with that, we can make a few more informed decisions. Now, that's not every single state. A lot of them will have to look at polls and more reliable polls to determine what's going on there and also take the intuition of what happens in that state. The intuition I have working in many of these states and knowing how the system works there. So let's go ahead and go to the Electoral College map and fill this bad boy out with four weeks left to go. All right, so we are going to fill out every state in this one. We're not going to put the strong Democrat, Republicans and all that. We're going to go through them each because we're going to talk about other races that could be happening in these places as well. So the map is going to be for the Electoral College, but the most important thing to know is if it's dark red or dark blue, that means there's really no chance for the other side to win it. The shades of lighter means that there is a chance. So it's not based on percentages, it's based on chances of winning. So let's go ahead and look at Alaska. I think Alaska is still maybe in this lighter uh, red area as far as Donald Trump winning. It could be a surprise state at the end of the day. We do have a competitive U.S. House race in, uh, in Alaska. I do believe the Democrat will win, but it could be close. It could be much closer. Washington State, a lock for the Democrats at, at all levels. There's no real congressional district that, will, um, that we'll be looking at there. With Oregon, there is one congressional district we will be looking at in Oregon that could be close. I believe that's the Oregon 6th. Uh, but at the national level when it comes to, or at the presidential level when it comes to the presidential race, it is a lock for the Democrats. Same thing with California. California is a lock for the Democrats, but there are a lot of congressional seats up for grabs. Almost all of them are held currently by Republicans. This is where the Democrats could tilt the House in California. If we go down to Hawaii, again, a lock for the Democrats. Let's go over to Montana. Now, presidential-wise, this is a lot for the Republicans. Tester could pull up an, uh, pull off an upset at the end. We'll see. I'm not sure. And the first congressional district could be competitive. But uh, Zinke was very, very close in the last one, but I think he'll do a little bit better in this one. We'll see. Both of the congressional districts in Idaho are a lock, and that's set. Same thing with Wyoming at large and the at large seat. Everything is a lock in Wyoming. In Utah, it is a lock for Donald Trump and for the four congressional districts that we have there. However, the thing you want to look at when it comes to Utah is will Utah actually be able to get over 40% of the vote for Kamala Harris? We're talking about a state that could be shifting. He, uh, Joe Biden, I think, had 37%, which is a large number of the votes. I want to see if Kamala Harris can push that 40% in Utah. If she does, we're seeing a state that is trending quite heavily. Now, let's go ahead and look at the other states. Look at, let's look at Arizona next. I feel that the Democrats are going to win. Ruben Gallego should win the Senate seat there, so that should be a hold, quote unquote a hold, because Kristen Sinema changed parties. There are two congressional races that are very close there as well. And as of right now, I think the Democrats can win one of those. They could win the second one, but they can win one. But when it comes to the Electoral College, I'm still going slightly Republican, and I think that this could change. Now, when it comes to Nevada, Nevada polls are looking stronger. We still don't have any early votes from Nevada, so we can't glean any from that. We have to only look at the polls. The congressional late races are looking stronger as well as the Senate race. It's looking much closer. And as I've mentioned time and time again, Harry Reid's machine and culinary workers union machines are huge. They're going to push this electorate. Now, New Mexico is going to be a lot for the Democrats. And now a new poll came out regarding the congressional district there, a local poll. It seems like the congressional district, which was a toss up, 
is going to possibly go quite strongly Democrat by maybe five, six or seven percent. And we're starting. And, and this is one thing I want to mention. When the when we look at the presidential polls, we don't we, we see these things very close. But when we look at the Senate polls and we look at the congressional polls, we see these bigger gaps. Now, again, as I've mentioned before, we might have a situation where people vote for president and then they vote for Trump and then don't vote in the other races. And that benefits the Democrats down ballot. But it could also be indicative that people aren't saying who they're voting for or the or maybe the national polls or the polls looking at the presidential race aren't as accurate because it just seems like these congressional races are really strongly trending Democratic when we talk about individual congressional races and Senate races as well. Let's get back to the map. Colorado has one uh, congressional race that is strong, and that is in uh, the Fort Collins area. Um, it's going to be a close one, so that is one definitely to watch on election night. Now, when it comes to North Dakota, everything there is a lock. When it comes to South Dakota, everything there is a lock. When it comes to Nebraska at large, and the third and first congressional district are locked, but it does seem now that we, I, I'm pretty safe in saying with the polling that we've seen and some good polling that we've seen, actual interviews coming out of the second, I say that is a lock for the Democrats. So that is a good thing. In Kansas, uh, we have a Democratic congressional seat there, but it's pretty safe. So we're not going to see much change. That's going to Donald Trump, Oklahoma, purely a Democrat or a Republican state. Uh, so Donald Trump's going to win it as well. Uh, in Texas, I'm not ready to put in the Alaska area. The Alaska area, I think from the one poll that we've seen is much closer. And if you look at election results and what's happening locally, that makes sense. Doesn't make quite sense here yet. But as I've mentioned, the most important race when it comes to Texas is going to be the U.S. Senate race. I don't think the uh, presidential race, I don't think it will go for Kamala Harris. It's going to be the Senate race. It's important. When we got congressional districts, I think we have one congressional district down in here that can be competitive. All the other ones are pretty much gerrymandered. Now, when we go over to Louisiana, this is safe on all levels. There's one congressional district for the Democrats and uh, they're going to have that one safely. Same with Arkansas, all the congressional districts and everything will be Republican. And the same with Missouri, the congressional districts are pretty strong for all of the parties. The Senate seat is not competitive and uh, the presidential race will not be competitive. Now, Iowa, I will put not quite in the Alaska territory. Well, actually I am putting in the Alaska territory, right? Um, not quite in the Arizona territory. I do think um, let's wait for the Des Moines Register and Seltzer poll to come out. I'm very interested to see what those numbers say. Uh, this could be competitive. And we are starting to see, especially after looking at the second congressional district in Nebraska and seeing the polls there actually do well, we are seeing some trends in Iowa that look good as far as ballot requests and whatnot. But we still need a few more harder numbers uh, in that case. Minnesota has pretty much become a lock for the Democrats and there shouldn't be much happening at the state level. Now, when it comes to, I'll just go to Illinois real quick because it is a lock. There's not going to be any competitive races when it comes to Congress. So I, I expect this to, to stay where it is because the Democrats have gerrymandered the hell out of this state, my state, right? Wisconsin. Now this one's interesting. So I would say right now, the numbers we're getting out of Wisconsin I'm now starting to put this in the same category as Nevada. Now, I will admit Nevada is purely speculative. And once we start getting actual vote by mail and numbers there, because remember, this is a vote by mail state in Nevada, we can really glean some information from that and figure out where the state's going. Wisconsin has already started vote by mail. And remember, 80% of their electorate will probably be voting by mail. Uh, mail or doing early votes. So the trends are looking very, very good for the Democrats when it comes to Wisconsin. There are also, there's also one congressional district over here on the West side. I think that the Democrats have a good chance of winning. There's also talk of the third congressional district down here in Racine and Kenosha. I don't think that's happening, but you know, keep an eye on it. All right. If we look at Indiana, there's nothing to really talk about in Indiana. If we look at Michigan as of right now, I still feel with the early numbers that are coming in, 
that Michigan looks like it's going slightly Democratic. Now, I don't put it in the, in the category of Arizona based on history, based on what I know of the state, and based on um, the numbers that we're seeing so far. Yes, they are a little bit more heavily Democratic, but they do look good for the Democrats. So I'm putting this in the blue. When it comes to Ohio, obviously we have the Senate race going on in Ohio. I'm going to put this in kind of the outside territory is Texas. It could be one in a landslide. It could change. I don't expect it to do so. Kentucky will not change. And Kentucky is a state that has one Democratic congressional district by Louisville, and it's safe. Tennessee, they've gerrymandered that state that now Nashville is split. We only have the one um, congressional race uh, held by Representative Cohen in uh, in, in Memphis. And that's going to just stay the way it is. Mississippi is not going to change. Now, Alabama will be, um, will be a Republican state, obviously for Donald Trump, but we have the creation of the new second congressional district, which will give the Democrats an extra seat. So automatically out of the seven seat gap that the Democrats need, we're already down to six because that Alabama second congressional district will be a congressional district that will go um, Democratic. So now let's go ahead and go to West Virginia. That's definitely a lock for the Republicans. Now there are a few congressional districts in Virginia that could, could possibly flip to the Republicans. I don't think so. Um, but we have the Vinman district and, and the, you know, he, the district he's running in right now. I still think those will go Democrat as far as how the state will perform form at the presidential level. I think now looking at the early vote numbers that have come in and uh, mitigating for the earlier, the earlier increases in the vote for the Republicans in early voting. Now, now the Democratic numbers are going exponentially up. I'm saying that Virginia is a safe seat. Same thing that we have with Maryland and the Senate seat now, uh, just not going to be competitive. Um, there's talk about the congressional district out West in the panhandle being competitive. We'll see about that. Uh, we're not going to have anything competitive in Delaware. New Jersey is pretty non-competitive as well. Now let's go ahead and go back down South. Let's go to, um, well, let me go for electoral college. Let me put Washington DC in there. Obviously strong for the Democrats. In Florida, we have one congressional race that can be close, and that is a 13th congressional district, which we're going to do the poll on. Unfortunately, if you did help us fund that poll, thank you very much. We'll have to probably delay it by a week due to Hurricane Milton going through there right now. But as far as the state is concerned on the presidential level, this is where I may be making my first big prediction. Looking at the early voting numbers, looking at that poll in Siena, I believe this is now a lock for the Republicans. I do not think that the Democrats have a chance of winning. Um, well, you know what? Unless I'm going to, I'm going to put it here. Unless we see shifts in people now doing more in-person vote voting, and that becomes much more democratic. I believe this can be a lock very soon as one set. Unfortunately, that in-person voting is very close to election day right now for the Democrats. I don't see anything positive in Georgia. Once early in-person voting starts, which is about a week from now, we can get a little bit more information, but I'm going to put Georgia kind of in this really dark or really, really light red like Arizona, just because we're lacking the information right now. We'll see what happens. Obviously, South Carolina is a strong congressional district with James Clyburn's being the only Democratic seat that we're going to keep there. North Carolina, looking at the polls and the legitimate polls, I would say that have come out of there, you know, not like the, the, even though the Atlas poll actually had them, had them up. I do think right now with the distribution and what's going on that we got to put North Carolina in the very, very slightest of uh, blue categories. Now, early vote is happening or vote by mail is coming in. It's going to be a very, very small percentage of the votes the large percentage of the in-person early votes, which I think North Carolina is going to be kind of like a, a little bit over 50%. I'm not, I, I don't remember. Anyway, when we look at North Carolina, I believe that it could go 
Democratic based on some of the very, very early numbers that we see. Now, let's go ahead and go over to the main uh, second congressional district, and I'm going to still put this very slightly red. It could, no one ever really, this could change to the Democratic side. I'm not very confident, though the rest of the state will remain Democratic. Vermont, no competitive races, will remain Democratic. I believe that now, looking at the polls that we've seen, the good polls that have come out of uh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire is no longer competitive. It is a lock, as well as Massachusetts. Now, in Rhode Island, there is a competitive congressional district. When it comes to the Electoral College, it is a lock for Kamala Harris, but there is a competitive congressional district. Same thing with Connecticut. There is one competitive congressional district. Both of these, by the way, being held by Democrats, the Rhode Island and the Connecticut one. So watch those. Those could flip over to the Democratic side. Now, let's go ahead and go to New York. As we can see, New York is going to be solid Democrat when it comes to the election. But at the congressional level, they have redrawn a lot of the districts. And it does seem like the Democrats could pick up between two to possibly four, maybe five seats. When it comes to New York, there was some polling that came out that showed good results in New York. One, not so good, but others good as well. So this is a place where Democrats obviously going to win at the, at the national level or at the statewide level, but watch some of those congressional seats. And finally, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is another state that we're seeing Casey do well. Um, as far as the, the congressional races, mm, not really anything. The recent polling that we've seen and the vote by mail numbers that we see are looking very strong for the Democrats. Now, I do want to make one point really clear here is you hear a lot of Republicans talk about uh, how early voting is more of a trend for Republicans and Democrats. Now, these are just talking points. They, I actually have a model that runs the numbers that have come in so far, the geographical disbursement so far, and see where these numbers are coming from. When the Republicans talk about this, they never give you any details. So always remember the details. I'm not giving as many details now. I usually do those when I look at the state numbers individually, which I'll probably be doing in tomorrow's uh, video because we'll have more uh, early votes than we did a few days ago so we can glean a little bit more information. But if you look at the distribution of the votes that you're seeing in Pennsylvania, it looks very good for the Democrats right now, though I do expect that to change a little bit. And with this being the case, Pennsylvania is not a big early vote state. Only about 23 to 25% of the vote is going to be early voting. Now, this is good for the Democrats as far as showing a trend, but everything's going to be exactly four weeks from right now. That's when Pennsylvania is won or lost. But I would say with the polls that we've seen, the early votes trending more Democratic than expected. And honestly, looking at my projection model right now, the numbers, as far as the early votes are concerned, are right at the same numbers for Kamala Harris as they are for John Fetterman. And he won by, what, 6% or so in that Senate race. So those numbers give me the confidence to at least at the most slightly put Pennsylvania in the Democratic slot. So my numbers still as of right now, and they have not changed, are 292 electoral votes for the Democrats, 246 for the Republicans. Now, as I mentioned when talking about Pennsylvania, I will be going over some of the early vote numbers tomorrow. I want to get a few more in, but we are starting to see those numbers come in. Hopefully, we'll start getting some numbers from Nevada soon to be able to glean something from Nevada. But otherwise, we do have a number of early voting numbers. All look pretty good for the Democrats. Now, there was a little bump in the early votes when it came to Virginia, but that was very much at the beginning of the cycle when many of the big counties hadn't reported a ton of votes. Now those big counties, Loudoun, Fairfax, and others, and some of the bigger cities like Richmond, they're starting to increase exponentially where the other smaller places where the Republicans do well are not. So the numbers are looking much, much better in Virginia. So we'll go over those models tomorrow and see what's happening. But yeah, I wanted to do the Electoral College. We're four weeks away. Why not go ahead and do this? All right, I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.